In this video, we will show the functionality provided by the Data Acquisition add-on. The first added feature is the ability to recover data to an image file. The standard RapidSpar device copies data sector by sector, creating a clone of the source drive. With the Data Acquisition add-on, we have the option to recover the data to an image file instead. This formats the target drive with the XFAT file system and creates a raw image file containing all data recovered from the source. The second added feature is a whole new mode of operation. In this mode, RapidSpar will present itself as a standard USB mass storage device, allowing absolutely any software to work with it. All identification parameters will be copied from the source drive, so the computer will be working with RapidSpar as if it was the original source drive connected through a USB drive bay. RapidSpar will be taking requests from the host computer and checking whether requested sectors have already been recovered. If not, RapidSpar will recover the relevant sectors to the target drive and also send them to the host as the response to the original data request. RapidSpar has exclusive control over the drive, so it will seamlessly handle read instability problems and maintain an uninterrupted and error-free connection to the host regardless of what is actually happening with the source drive. This ensures that our computer will never freeze, restart, or drop the connection due to intermittent problems with the source drive. Let's try it on a real case. Here we have a 640GB Toshiba laptop drive with less than 100 bad sectors. First, we'll try connecting it directly to Windows through a USB drive bay. Windows is now attempting to mount the drive, the mounting process includes a lot of highly fragmented reading and writing operations directed at file system metadata. All it takes for mounting to fail is a single bad sector. What's happening right now is that Windows starts mounting the drive, reaches the first bad block within critical file system metadata, attempts to read it 18 times in a row, fails, and restarts the mounting process from the beginning. It will hang like this indefinitely, well, it restarts the mounting process an unlimited number of times, all the way until the drive suffers a complete failure. Of course, this means that we can't even try to run any Windows-based data recovery software on this drive because it remains invisible to the operating system. Now let's try it with RapidSpar. We have a healthy drive connected to the target port, and the computer is connected to RapidSpar over USB 3.0 so we only have to connect our unstable Toshiba drive to the source port. By default, RapidSpar will block file system mounting processes initiated by Windows or Mac OS to prevent unnecessary drive degradation. We will allow mounting in this case just to show what would happen. After that, we only have to press the Mount Image button. RapidSpar has now presented itself as the original source drive. Windows is mounting the drive like last time, but now RapidSpar is handling read instability issues and blocking all writes to prevent data loss. The same bad sectors are present on the source drive, but this time RapidSpar is recovering every good sector within every bad block, padding bad sectors with zeros or alternatively a customizable pattern, and sending the assembled blocks to Windows. This way, Windows remains entirely unaware that there are any bad sectors at all and will continue mounting the drive without the information in these bad sectors, instead of failing the mounting process and restarting it over and over again. With RapidSpar, Windows was able to successfully mount the drive. We can now use any logical recovery software to seamlessly work with RapidSpar to recover the files we need. Let's start a scan with RStudio now. RStudio is scanning this partition, as if it was working directly with the original source drive while RapidSpar is doing hardware data recovery imaging on the fly. It's hitting some bad blocks, resetting the drive and recovering every good sector within every bad block. No matter what is happening with the source, the computer will never become aware of any issues and will continue working reliably. We finished the scan in 7 minutes and 28 seconds. The RapidSpar device remembers all sectors that we already read during the scan, so if we do the same scan again, 
it finishes much faster in 4 minutes and 11 seconds, because this time, RapidSpar automatically read everything from the image on the healthy target drive instead of reading the degraded source drive a second time. Now that we finished the scan and found a file tree, we can save the files we need. Because we already scanned this whole partition, these files are being saved from the image on the healthy target drive. Let's try it on another case. This time, we have an 80 gigabyte Seagate drive with severe file system corruption and about 1500 bad sectors. In this case, the file system is heavily corrupted, so when we connect it directly, Windows does not get stuck doing an unlimited number of failed mounting attempts. It reads sectors which usually contain critical file system metadata, does not find what it's looking for, and gives up. We can now run RStudio directly on this drive to see what we can recover. Heavy logical corruption is preventing us from scanning the file system metadata directly. We must instead do a full scan of the whole drive to find all available data. We can see in the log below that RStudio is running into bad sectors as it is doing its scan. The end result is that it took 2 hours and 20 minutes to finish and found 70,892 files. We showed a successful completion of this scan. However, every other attempt of scanning this drive resulted in a blue screen and complete crash of the system. We'll explain why that happens in a minute. Now we'll do the same scan with the source drive connected through RapidSpar. We can see that this time, RStudio is not running into any bad sectors, because they are being handled by RapidSpar. We finished in 1 hour 27 minutes and recovered an extra 538 files. We found more files because RapidSpar was recovering every good sector within every bad block, ensuring that RStudio processed all good sectors on this drive. When this scan was ran directly on the source, due to limitations of Windows, RStudio was not retrying bad blocks sector by sector and was skipping them instead. RapidSpar allowed RStudio to finish faster because it is utilizing specialized hardware which is able to automatically reset drives upon hitting a bad sector, which drastically cuts down on undesirable processing. This makes the recovery process faster and, more importantly, much safer for the drive. Please note that all of this has absolutely nothing to do with RStudio. All Windows-based data recovery software tools will operate in this manner because they do not have the necessary control over the drive to do any kind of read instability handling and must instead rely on the OS kernel. Software tools can only send commands to the OS API, which then go down the chain and eventually read commands get sent to the drive. If a read command falls on a bad sector, then there isn't a mechanism for software tools to do anything other than wait for the drive to resolve the unsuccessful read commands on its own. At best, this takes at least 4 seconds per failed read command, and during this time, the drive is actively damaging itself by doing hundreds of internal read retries and then using its read-write heads to write to its service area to update different logs. At worst, the OS kernel could have an exception, causing the whole computer to crash with a blue screen. If a software tool were to retry bad blocks sector by sector, then the operating system would have to process a lot more unsuccessful read commands. This would take a very long time, cause much more drive degradation, and greatly increase the risk of a total system crash, which is why it's not done this way. RStudio does an excellent job at the task it is designed to do, which is recovering files from drives with logical corruption, Handling read instabilities is entirely outside of its control, so we see much better results when we use RapidSpar to handle the damaged source drive instead of forcing RStudio to rely on Windows. At this point, we have already scanned the whole drive, which means we have the full image, so if we do other scans or go to save our files, we will be working only with the image on the healthy target drive. For example, if we do the same scan a second time, it finishes in only 25 minutes. The last, and perhaps the most interesting example we will show, is another Seagate drive which is encrypted by FileVault. This time, we will be working through OS X. This Seagate drive is heavily degraded with approximately 3,000 bad sectors. When we connect it directly to a Mac, 
OSX begins reading the most critical structures required for the decryption process. It reaches the first bad sector, tries to read it five times in a row, gives up, and displays this message that the drive is not readable. Just like Windows, the smallest block size that OSX uses to read the drive is eight sectors long. If there is just one bad sector within that eight sector block, the whole read command will fail and all eight sectors will be lost, even though seven of them are actually good sectors. Now we'll try it with RapidSpar. All of the functionality we showed in this video is performed entirely by the RapidSpar hardware without any software or hardware requirements for the host computer, so it will seamlessly work on a Mac, just like on a PC with Windows or any other OS. When we connect the Seagate drive through RapidSpar, we allow OSX to gain access to every good sector within every bad block, which gives it enough data to successfully decrypt and mount the drive. The third and last added feature is the ability to generate a file report from the RapidSpar Assistant client software. We can choose the folders we are interested in and press the report button on the toolbar. This generates a CSV file containing the precise integrity and hashing information of our recovered files. Such a report can be useful when evaluating the results of the recovery or communicating with customers. Thanks for watching.